I'm joined on the sofa this Friday by magician Roy Bond from Carlton and a business consultant Deborah Labatti. And Roy, I think you're the first magician I've ever had on this show. Um, right. You look really cool, your shoes and your little goatee. How did you get into being a magician? Uh, it was um, a long process. It, I didn't get into magic until I was in my 30s. Um, I have two uncles who are magicians. One's kind of a serious sort of performer. The other ones are more of a hobbyist. And I got tired of watching them perform and not knowing how they did it. And we're going to go into a couple of tricks later in the show, mm. but did you have to train very hard to do what you do? I, I think uh, because I love what I do, I don't, I don't see it as hard training, I just find it interesting. Um, some of the routines demand a, a lot of, um, I don't know, a lot of perseverance, I suppose. Um, but some of them come quite naturally. So I think it's down to personality and how you, how you learn what you learn. OK, well, Deborah and I are ready. Can you show us a trick? Yeah, yeah, quite, quite easily. Um, a, a, a little love... eye test, a little eye test, really. I mean, card magic's really a staple for magicians. Um, but I always like to know the people I perform to are, their eyes are okay. They're not colour blind to anything. So um, if, if I fan the cards out, what colour are the backs of the cards, for instance? Red. So I keep it easy as well, okay. because some okay. of the places I perform, people have had drinks and they don't always know what colours what. So that you're quite right with red. If I show yeah. you the faces of the cards, what colours can you see on the faces? Uh, black and red. Mm -hmm. yeah, Am you, I right, You'd Deborah? agree with yeah, that, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> if, I, if I isolate a certain card, that's called a court card, there are different colours here. Yes. Can you see the other colours? They yeah. have uh, some gold and some blues. Golds and Blue. blues. Yep. Just, just to save time, just name a card you can see there, any, any card you want. Uh, the Nine of Diamonds. Nine of Diamonds. Is there any particular reason why you picked it? I like diamonds. You like diamonds. <laughs> That's a girl thing. It's a girl yeah. thing. It's, it's diamonds and it's hearts with girls. And, and really, I, I could make a, a fortune predicting that kind of thing. Um, the nine of diamonds was a free choice. Could have picked any, but yeah. nine of diamonds. Y you could say it's quite safe at the bottom of that pile. Yeah. Um, because if I were trying to take it, it'd have to be on the top. Yeah. We can make it even safer by putting your nine of diamonds in the centre of the deck of cards. Yeah. So it's hidden. I can't get at it now, top or bottom. The first question I asked you both was what colour are the backs of the cards and you said red. Yeah. When you look really carefully you'll notice also there's, there's quite a lot of white on the back of the cards. Yeah. yeah. But red's a predominant colour so you yeah. don't necessarily notice that. Same on the face of the cards, there's actually all the colours and there's actually quite a lot of white on the face of the <gasps> cards isn't there? Quite this a lot so of creepy. white. Oh my goodness! <laughs> It's a little bit creepy, isn't it? Can no. you remember your card, though? Can you remember your card? The Nine of Diamonds. Was it the this one? The Nine of Diamonds. Was it that one? Could have been... Just wait a second. I think we put it back somewhere around the centre, didn't we? Oh, my goodness. The uh, Nine... This is so oh, weird. So, so there, so there's, there's <laughs> the Nine of Diamonds. Really? You, oh wait, wait, wait a minute. You oh, could have, this is so weird. Could have picked anything. Could have picked anything. But you picked the Nine of Diamonds. Would you hold on to the Nine of Diamonds? Just put it on your hand. I'm going to oh give it to goodness. you. Just keep it there, because I'm going to move really quick at the next part. I'm going to sh show you that there's really nothing to hide from you. There's really nothing left. There was, there was a load of cards. I there was understand. 52 of them. Remember yours, Nine of Diamonds? If, yeah. I, if I said to you, would you put your hand on the top of your card to keep it where it is? Yeah. I'm going to try and swap it. OK. For this blank one. OK. I mean, you, you would think you would have felt something, surely. Yeah, I've got that firmly in my hand. Nine of diamonds, right? taking that off me, yeah. Do you want to check? Oh, my God! <laughs> And it wouldn't really be magic, I don't think, unless we got rid of that, that one as well. That is incredible. We need to get rid of every single one. So the only problem is you owe me a deck of cards now. That is blank. Look, <laughs> it's blank. No, how did you do that? This is, this is a card. You said you were going to ask that. I know, you stole my question. It is just a card, <laughs> this after is, all. That is impossible. It is impossible. Um, that is impossible. But, how did, but I had it in my hand. What can I tell you? What can I tell He's you? not going to tell you, you is You probably it? think I'm Harry Potter's dad now, don't you? Yeah. You, you do. You do. Have you ever had anyone faint after you've done something No, like no, I've had, I've had lots of, um, uh, should we say, colourful language, generally from boys. Has one ever gone wrong and you've done that before and they're like, that's not my card? Not with that routine. Um, generally, <laughs> as, you, as you learn your craft, I suppose, you learn to cope with things when they go wrong, because things do go wrong, but you have to make them look like they're part of the routine. Have you got a very quick trick you can show us or start showing us in about a minute? In about a minute yeah. from now. Yeah. Yeah, I could. I could. Go. Okay. I, <laughs> I need to go it. to the next one. Let, let me get rid of this. We I, can start I, it. it. It's basically a. I love this. It's like. It's a coin thing. It's and it's probably one of the first tricks I ever learned. <laughs> I think the bigger the better. 
Um, let's get rid of those for a second. Okay, so a 50p. 50p. Yeah. The, the classic thing for magicians is is when thing happens, they go, they go up the sleeves. Yeah. Right. That, that's the obvious thing. If I don't have sleeves, the next logical place for you to think the coin's gone is going to be the watch. Yeah. So. I wouldn't have thought that, but I have Well, you wouldn't have thought it. But there we go. If you put your hand on the top, that's the point where... Put your hand on the top. On there? Yeah, well, yeah. <gasps> it's gone. So, oh. so it's just a basic thing. It's, it's a steal. Um, and it was taught to me by a guy called Pat Page. Uh, and he passed away a few years ago. Uh, he, was, he was in his 70s, very good magician. Um, but that's invaluable. I, I could tell you a way of dressing that up so that... The language is, is even worse. Are you impressed, everybody? I am. Is it just me that's... No, no, I want to ask the same question, but he's not going to tell us the answer, is <laughs> no, he? No, <laughs> we want to find out. This is incredible. I wish that... Oh, just... You're really good. So. I, thought, I thought you were going to ask about the beard. Is it? Well. Yeah, I didn't. OK, right. Wait, did you, pardon the pun, go to Magic University? Did you go to uni at all? I didn't go to uni, no. Um, I had a, a rather fractious upbringing, so... Um, I went straight from school to work because um, I, I kind of left school during uh, the other big recession in the in the early 80s. Um, so for me, it was it was more about life skills and, and just getting on with uh, getting on with things really. Um, what would you say to someone who has just graduated, or was thinking perhaps about going to university, and they don't really know whether it's the right thing? I mean, you've proved you can do it. Would you encourage others to do the same? I would say. Um, it, it's very important if you're going to thrive in any kind of career, you have to you have to love really what you do, and then it doesn't become a chore, and that shows. Um, if if you have to wake up in the morning and and go to work and you you hate it or you hate the thought of it and you'd rather do something else, then you should have made that choice earlier. And you obviously love that. I mean, I loved watching you, and you must love surely watching people. Yeah, kind absolutely. Of... That's, I, as as a magician, I, there's not a lot of magic that goes on that I. I don't know or I can't find out about. So the initial attraction for me of magic was the wow factor. But now I know what, what goes into making that wow factor. I, I, I get my sort of kicks by the audience reaction uh, and, and feeding back from people and uh, dealing with with hecklers, and, and I, that's my buzz, if you like. It's, uh... Well, I think it's fantastic to know that it's not just all about academic stuff. So looking forward to talking to you guys after the break. Hi. You do a trick, <laughs> and I am Definitely. actually going to probably finish all of this, so... OK. Um, <laughs> I, I suppose the, the, the classic... I'm very loath to do card tricks, I'm, although it doesn't look like it. Everybody does them. Um, but I'll probably do a classic for you. Um, you. You can pick anyone you like, I suppose. Oh, yeah, I've just got with your, it all in my hands With now. your sugary oh, fingers. I'll you do what you like. I'll, no, I'll, do what I'll you just like. do that, shall I? They're, they're, they're a throwaway pick item. Pick anyone I like. Yeah, anyone you like. I'm Not that have one. This. You can have that one. I can have that one. Yeah. Right. Obviously, I don't want to say, see it. Show it to anyone who cares. Oh, show me, show me. OK. And then, and then just stop <laughs> me where, wherever. Somewhere around the middle would be good. Excellent. Did you... You remember the card? I saw it. I'm just going to whisper to everyone who hasn't seen it. OK, OK. So I did bring something else. I have uh, three props with me. Um, elastic bands, you should probably choose one of them. Okay. I mean, one that looks probably a little bit more magical than all the others. <laughs> it's got a hint of pink, so it's I'm... a hint of pink, OK. Choosing this one. I shouldn't do that. The thing, the thing with this is, is getting to use inanimate objects with, with a routine. OK. It's always good to be able to... Um, everyday household objects are, are good. The thing is, the card tends to disappear from time to time. But I'm going to keep the uh, the card where it is with the elastic okay. band, and that'll keep it where it needs to be. But when you need it, you can take it any time, just by. Um... <gasps> Sorry, I don't know why I keep making that noise. <laughs> just by using the elastic he band to just... to bring it back. Well, it gets me out of the house, you know. I like to. Um... How do you how do, do, you do this? Yeah. I know I didn't want to know before, but how you said you do were you never do say this? That. <laughs> I don't think I want to know actually, because it's just incredible. Well, during the break, we had a little chat, and, and he, did you he, tell Matthew? No, he filled me in on that one. He, I didn't really know that until Matthew he, uh... is in training. He's going to tell me when we get home. Yeah, I bet he does. I bet he does. <laughs> Will you call that pillow talk? <laughs> he probably would. He now, probably would. the six thirty show wants you. If you're between sixteen and twenty-five and have a talent, then get in touch. Coming up. On the screen now you might
might be in a band, a dancer, a stand-up comic, or anything else you think deserves highlighting. The details are on the screen, so send us a clip of your performance, and you could be sitting on the sofa here with me and possibly Matthew as well. Deborah, have you've got a son in a band, haven't you? I have, yes. And would he inter be interested in doing something like this? I mean, it's quite good, isn't it, to get people have things like this to to see people? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Nottingham as a whole is just brilliant for getting new, fresh talent out in front of everybody. Mm, uh, there's lots of people you know, really promoting these young young performers. Well, I hope we have some people getting in touch. And very briefly, Roy, what are you up to this weekend? Are you doing more magic tricks or basking I'm, in the sun? I'm appearing at um, a, a local music festival in, in Newton in Nottingham. Mm -hmm. uh, we thought we might be going to the same one, didn't we? Yeah, what uh, are you my son's playing there on Sunday. Oh, so, amazing. So it's called Deerstock and it's at, uh, it's at Newton. It's a fantastic event, local, um, within a taxi ride even from the city centre. Um, it's everything that you want a festival to be, but on a on a smaller scale. Fantastic. Well, hopefully the weather is going to hold out. Thank you so much, both of you, for joining and for doing the tricks and for eating the fo food. And for all you at home, I really hope you enter that as well. From me, Matthew, my lovely guest, and this delicious cake, it's very goodbye for me and have a good evening.